three, two, one. Welcome to the show. All right. All right, all right. <laughs> the bull's not looking very good there, bro. Oh, the bull's dead. Yeah. Or maybe he's just resting. Let's hope he's just resting, but... Uh, <laughs> He'll come back at some point. Oh, boy. Oh, that's funny. It's not, it's, it sounds his butt's not in the... <laughs> <laughs> Man, it has been one heck of a week. Um, I think we tend to say that a lot the, the last few shows. Man, what a week. Uh, this was... this. I mean, so it's Friday, and the uh, market's not doing doing well today at all. Hasn't quite yet undercut the June lows, but... Uh, well, it's Sunday when you're watching this, but it's right, Friday. Right, right, right. It's Friday when we're recording it. Yeah. Uh, so, um, you know, the last gasp of hope for this thing not completely careening off the rails mm-hmm. is if we get some kind of support at, like, 3650. Um, you know, there's a lot of people talking about, well, it's support levels at... 3,400 or 3,300 or 3,000. You know, you can do Fibonacci retracements and all kinds of stuff. But uh, if we lose that 3,650 level, which is basically the um, the June low, uh, y- you know, all you're doing is anticipating possible support levels going down. But it's going to go down like an elevator. Yeah. You know. Like an elevator. Yeah. Yeah. Like a really it's, fast one in a big new hotel. <laughs> I mean, it, t- 2008, that's what happened. A big, yeah. <laughs> in a really new hotel, it came straight down. Most of the time, it, it's not like that. It kind of dribbles down and all that. But, I mean, we'll see. But it's been one heck of a week. All right. So, basically, uh, I was going to... That's basically the market recap. So, that's the first part. Uh, we're, <laughs> uh, so, after that, I, I, I put this out on... Uh, I came across this, this article this week, and it just... The title of it just absolutely grabbed me. So... Um, I put it out earlier in the in the week, like I think Thursday. So you, maybe you guys already read it, but we're gonna kind of pick it, pick through it. And then what you know actually is Warren Buffett's investment strategy. Um, everybody talks about you know how Warren Buffett says to stay in it for the long the long run. You know you buy good stocks and hold them for uh, 10, 20, 30 years, and you'll you'll turn out fine. And we're just gonna take a, and a look at what he actually does as opposed to what uh, he says we should do. Um, and does it, does it even make sense? And then, uh, the bonus chart is going to be the EFA is the ticker symbol for the I fund and dollar sign USD is a ticker symbol for the U S dollar index. Uh, I did that on something like it on, on Facebook live this week. And we're going to kind of talk through that real quick. And then the TSP fund charts. All right. So, uh, CNBC, right? Everybody gets a lot of uh, information from CNBC, and that's good. A lot of they have a lot of, um, you know, good analysts and and writers, uh, and sometimes they're not so good. But this this title just grabbed me, right? Warren Buffett, Jack Bogle, and financial planners, generally, uh, thrown all in one bucket. Financial planners agree when stocks are down. Quote: Don't watch the market closely. So. I'm thinking, okay, that doesn't seem to make sense to me. Like that sounds like clickbait. It, it, sounds like you it, want it baited you to go, me in. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, like, if if you uh, so when stocks are down, don't watch the market closely. And I think the first thought I had when I read that was, uh, I'm on a trip, and uh, I'm I know you know I'm I'm thinking about running out of gas, but I just shouldn't watch the gas gauge. I shouldn't watch that very closely because, you know, it'll, it'll stress me out or whatever. Like, right. I, I mean, it's, it's insane. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. Well, was it clickbait or is that actually what the advice was in the article? Cause I didn't read the article yet. Oh yeah. We're going to, we're going to read the article. Let's do it's, it. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, it's, it's, the article is, is written by this guy, Nick, uh, Vega. And this is his Twitter thing. He's a, uh, he's an entertainment reporter. For CNBC, make it whatever that is as part of CNBC. So he's an entertainment reporter. He's he's not a finance guy. <laughs> so take it for what it's worth. But he's the actual author of the. He's not at Burger King. He's at Nick Vega. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is that this actually, you know, obviously a screenshot of that off of his home Twitter thing. It was weird. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, skyrocketing inflation, right? Uh, tons of market turmoil in two thousand two. We all know about that. Um, S&P, 
which includes some of the biggest names in Wall Street, right? Apple, Amazon, Coke, on track for the worst first half of the year uh, since 1970. So this was this article actually came out in May. Okay, so it's not super current. Uh, it's kind of after the first leg down of this thing. But the gist of it is the same. <clears throat> so downturn has been fueled in part by, of course, COVID, lockdowns, you know, war in the Ukraine, interest rates, nothing's changed since May. All the same stuff. Uh, many, inv- many investors saving for retirement may be wondering what to do in such a tumultuous market, right? Warren Buffett has an answer for that. Try not to worry about it too much. Um, I agree. I mean, worry doesn't do anything for you, right? Uh, there's, there's no point in worrying about it. Right. That's emotional. Yeah. So we would agree emotional. with that. Absolutely agree. Uh, and, and that's why we use technical analysis so that we don't have to worry, <laughs> right? Okay. Uh, I'm going to try to do the show without being too, like, snippy like, about it. But, <laughs> it's hard. But it's tough. It's it is. Um, so this is an apparent quote from Warren Buffett, right? I would tell investors, don't watch the market closely. Okay? That's the end of the quote. And, and then it, the context is Buffett told CNBC in 2016 during a period of wild market fluctuations. So that is true. Um, 2015 and the beginning of 2016, uh, if you go back and look at it on a chart, it was it was rough. Yeah, and, and, and so this is important, I think, uh, when I started looking through that to point out, because this is where the media gets us. They just took a quote, some random quote from him in 2016. Yep. They're putting it in an article about how the market is in 2022. You have to start there and go, okay, I'm going to take that with a grain of salt. Because he wasn't talking about what's going on right now. He was talking about this in 2016, which, you know, you you don't want to freak out about that. There's not a whole lot you can do when the market's doing like this, right? Right. Right. When it's it's going sideways. And that's what he was talking about. Yeah. Not what's going on today. Right. Right. Exactly. Um, (laughs) Okay. So the Oracle of Omaha added that investors who buy, quote, good companies over time will see results 10, 20, 30 years down the road. Uh, what is a good company, right? How do, we, how do we figure out what a good company is? I mean, I could tell you that, but we'd, we'd go down the, you know, the financial analyst road. Right. 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 The fundamentals, there are fundamentals um, uh, f- uh, that are financials of a company that can tell you if they're financially strong, if they're on the right path, you can also look at the management and look and see yep. what their experience is. There's a lot of things you can do. Uh, and uh, shoot, the guy's name just went out of my head that, that writes the writes the books we were just talking about earlier. Good to yeah, great. Good to great. Um, Collins. Yeah. So, th- I mean, there are ways to tell if a company is good. But, however, yep. <laughs> the point is, like, why we kind of get snarky with that comment, if you read it, you know, Investors who buy good good companies, well, you, you, you know, the average retail investor doesn't know how to tell if they're a good company or and or doesn't have access to the information or know how to read it or, you know, to analyze it. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Oracle of Omaha. Yeah. But that's not quite how it works because it, it doesn't work think, that way for us. It does for him. It just doesn't work that way for well, us. Well, yeah, because he's got a whole team of analysts that tell yeah. him who the good companies are, and they're good at that part. I yeah. mean, they 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 do tried and true fundamentals, and they buy companies, yep. but they don't buy stocks. Right. They buy companies. Right. right? And that's something people yeah. stocks buying stocks is buying part of a company, but we buy a few shares. He buys the, the company. The company. Yeah. <laughs> or, we're we're going to get to his his whole yeah. strategy here after I get through this article real quick, but um, so maybe some of you guys remember or, or have heard of this this thing in the, the 70s. It was called the Nifty 50, okay? Um, and if you, if you Google the Nifty 50 um, and you bring it up, this is, this is from Investopedia. Many Nifty 50 stocks sported price-to-earnings ratios as high as 100 times earnings. They propelled the bull market in the early 70s, only to come crashing down in the 73-74 bear market. That period was marked by political scandal, rising oil prices, and rising interest rates. Sounds an awful lot like it does right now, right? Um, so, you know, you can't, you can't argue with this idea that if you buy good companies and hold them over time... Um, but you have to, all good companies, you have to know when to sell them. I mean, mm-hmm. GE was one of the biggest companies ever in the United States. And it, uh, it was like under 10 bucks a share at the bottom of two, 2008. I mean, 
And we're gonna we're gonna get to it anyway. I have, I have a little slide about what Warren Buffett's actual um, what how he actually trades. But okay, so many experts, including Buffett, uh, recommend buying index funds. Right, you're automatically diversified. They hold every stock in the index. S and P has all the big names. You know, Apple, Amazon. And then we switch to to Jack Bogle. So stay the course, uh, says Bogle in 2018. Uh, actually right before he died in 2019. He was the founder of the Vanguard Group. So Vanguard is one of the biggest, uh, of course, uh, index fund uh, companies, right? He he created index funds, Jack Bogle did. Stay the course. Don't let changes in the market, even the big ones like the financial crisis, change your mind and never, never, never <laughs> be in or out of the market. Always be in at a certain level, okay? Um, Warren Buffett is an, is an investor, right? Jack Bogle is selling you a product. Yeah. He wants you to sell you index funds. <laughs> That's right. Don't ever be out completely. Never. And I, and I don't know that I would uh, completely disagree with the context of that, okay. if you put it in context, meaning, you know, we're, we're talking about the TS piece is very different, yep. but I would say in general, out of my entire portfolio, meaning everything I have access to, um, I might not always be 100% out of the market. Like it's a very broad term, yeah. Right, I might not be. I might be in a short version of the index. Sure. I might be. That's still on the market. Yeah, like yeah I, that's yeah. an ETF. So this is the stuff that I feel like they glaze over. And again, I'm not blaming the people they quoted. Right. I'm blaming the media did that. Right, like right. The media crafted the story to sound like they wanted it to sound. But he did say that, right? And he, I mean, it's an accurate quote. It's just it's it's not put in any context. I mean, a the guy sells index funds for a living. He created them, yep. so he wants you to buy Vanguard index funds, which yep. is what you would normally see if you if you have a four hundred one k or your spouse does or your buddy or whatever. Go look at it, and you'll see Vanguard this, Vanguard that. Like yep. we just started a four hundred one k for our, our company. Yeah. It's and, all Vanguard, and that's all Vanguard. Now, what we did though is we bought access to a brokerage account through the IRA, yep. and we can trade whatever we want to. Yep. But my point is. This guy sells index funds and telling you don't always don't ever be completely out. Well, he's got a little biased opinion. Yeah. That's your point. That's right? my point. Yep. Um, uh, so like like Buffett, uh, Bogle also recommends a buy and hold strategy. Of course, um, he previously told CNBC that buying stocks and holding them was the best way to invest because your emotions will defeat you totally if you try to sell your holdings and avoid losses and get back in afterwards. Based on emotion. Like if he had, if they had finished that sentence with, based on emotion, I'd be all in, it, it, because true. that is a hundred percent true. Yeah. Well, of course, you know I, we're biased. We say you don't trade on emotion, train, trade on data, right? Right, and that is what those guys do. In real life, they trade That's on what, data. They're not they, emotional about anything. Right? No, which is what we try to do. We're not saying we're anywhere near you know those guys. But that is very good advice. Don't trade on emotion, which is what most people would be doing. So that's why they're saying don't do that. Yeah. You know, if you're going to trade on emotion, then buy and hold. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, if you're going to trade on emotion, you're going to get hurt in the you're market. Not, you're not trading. Yeah, you're not trading. You're just, you're, you know, well, so but if you trade on data, that's not emotionally driven. Right. The, I, 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 I would argue that if they were here, they would not disagree with that statement. No, I'm sure. It would yeah. be great to have a conversation with those guys. Not, not that we ever would. But, yeah, but, exactly. Yeah. Um, so for most investors, right, of course, it, it says if you if you miss the recovery, there's a very good chance you're going to make it harder to hit your financial goals. Um, if you've got a diversified portfolio, uh, if you're just buying some index funds and you've got a long enough time horizon, it might be best just to ride these uh, roller coasters, says this certified financial planner here from Goldwyn Wealth Management or whatever. Investors who sell when the markets are down may actually end up derailing their long-term plans, says this other guy from Amer Ameriprise. Um, but the... <laughs> The last quote of this article, which absolutely floored me, it was this one. I've been a professional investor, and he, he's a, uh, I can't remember who this guy is. He's a, he's, a, he's a fund manager, professional investor. I've been a professional investor for over 20 years. I haven't logged into my 401k site since the beginning of this slide, mean, meaning, you know, the beginning of the, of the crash here in 2022. For a lot of people, not looking at this might be the best way to kind of help them sleep at night. I mean, 
I, I can't, first of all, you can't do it. If you care at all about your money in retirement, you can't not look at it when it's falling off a cliff. That's just ridiculous right. advice, right? And it goes back to the idea of, you know, if you think you're running out of gas, just don't don't look at the, the gas gauge and yeah, you'll be fine. Or, yeah, or if your bank account's getting low, just don't look at it. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry about how much you're spending because, yeah. you know. Because again, let's remind everybody, please, the TSP account is an account. If the balance is declining, you're not yeah. buying cheap. <laughs> Go watch the video on, on our Facebook yeah. group page, please. You're not buying cheap, right? That's not how this works. Yep. Your account balance is going down, and you want to keep it from going down, so yep. that is why you would go to G Fund. Yep. It gets really simple, and we make it really complicated with the, all of the pundits and the media yep. and everything, but the TSP is not that hard to, to wrap your head around yep. if you understand the, you know, the, the fundamental truths, which is your account balance is what matters. If my account balance is dropping – I'm not going to go put my head in the sand. No, no, especially if I'm in or close to retirement and I actually need to draw the money to, to make ends meet. Right. Uh, all right. So how does Warren Buffett actually, you know, we're, we're not going to go through, through all, I'm just going to ping on a couple of things with this, but what is his actual investment strategy, right? Um, so he, he's got a, a, a list of, of things, right? Look for a margin of safety. Okay. Uh, so prioritizing a margin of safety, right, is a cornerstone of his philosophy, right? Uh, margin of safety refers to characteristics of an investment that um, help to protect investors from losing money. That seems odd, right? You're trying to, he's trying to keep you from losing money. He's trying, to, he's trying to keep himself from losing money. For example, if a stock trades at $10, bucks, um, that company's assets are realistically worth 12 then there's a $2 margin of safety, right? That's the idea of value investing. You're, you, that is buying shares cheap. That's what that is. You're, when, if you can fundamentally uh, evaluate a company and, and you are comfortable that the company is actually worth $15 a share yeah. and you buy it, they're willing to sell it to you for 10 bucks a share. Right. But if you are comfortable that it's worth 15 you're buying it at a discount. But it takes, it takes a good amount of financial an- analysis to do that, to value yes. a company. And there's... Think you know, there's there's people services out there that'll do it for you, and you can do it with the S and P five hundred. Yeah, you can you can say that the the, the P E ratio of the S and P is X, and right. if it comes down to Y, I feel like it's cheap. That's a way you you can do that. Yep. So, Buffett's goal is always to pay less than a company's intrinsic value. Uh, as he says, a too high purchase price for the stock of an uh, uh, of an excellent company can undo the effects of a, of a subsequent decade of favorable de- business developments, right? He's not paying, he's not paying <laughs> top dollar for, for stocks. And, if, and it, we're going to talk about stocks because that's what he does. But if you're trading the t- TSP, right, I fund, S fund, C fund, you, the idea that you just keep buying as, as price keeps going up, right? It, it we, we, conflate all these things together and mm. and it and, and it's resulted in this thing that's that's got people brainwashed that that uh you know the only the, the only thing that makes sense the only thing anybody should do is just keep buying the stock funds it's it's not what warren buffett does it's not what he it's not just not how he does it um focus on quality right he doesn't invest in junk well we we can't do that you buy the s&p 500 you can't just buy Apple, Amazon, Netflix, back when they were the ones that you should have bought in, in the S&P, you can't just buy them. You have to buy the whole index, right? You get all the, the good and the bad. Um, don't follow the crowd. Well, we, we don't have that either because we're, uh, we only have three options. You know, three stock funds, a bond fund, and a money market. Don't fear market crashes and corrections, right? The obvious goal of stock investing is to buy low and sell high. But, but human nature can compel us to do the exact opposite, which is true. It's human nature. It's emotional. Um, when we see our friends making money, that's when we feel like we should be putting our money in. And when the stock markets crash, you know, it's our nature to get out before prices drop any further. I'm not sure that's our nature anymore, but, you know. Buffett loves it when prices drop since it creates opportunity to buy at a discount. This is true. If you were shopping at your favorite store and suddenly learned of the entire store's prices were 20% lower, would you panic and run away? Of course not. Uh, Buffett embraces discounts on his favorite stocks and says, opportunities come infrequently. When it rains gold, put out your buckets, not not the, your thimble, right? You have to know when prices are cheap. We did a, 
I can't remember if it was the show. It was a show months ago at this point. Uh, it was probably April. And <laughs> the beginning of it was, you know, is it cheap? Was it, was it cheap last week? Is it going to be cheap next week? Yeah. I mean, how do, how do we know when prices are cheap? If you're a fundamental guy and you say, I think if the PE of the S&P 500, P's price to earnings ratio um, gets to a certain number, I'm comfortable because I think that's cheap. Yeah, and that's a way, but it's not, a, it's not what he's talking about, though. No. Because what he's talking about is, is Walmart or Coca-Cola, you know, all of these companies, these large companies that he's, he has spent years analyzing, his people have, yep. and they say, oh, we feel pretty confident that the shares are undervalued right now, yep. right? And so that is very different then because the C fund is plummeting yeah. that we should buy more of it. Right. But right. everybody makes those two things we just described the same. The same. Yeah. And it is absolutely not the same. If we could just, again, we're here for education folks. Yep. If you, if you can start to understand, I hope those that are listening to this, all five of you, <laughs> um, if you can, <laughs> just so good. if you can, cons- if you can just get your head wrapped around that, it starts to help make this all a lot better because everything you hear on the TV yeah. is talking normally about all this other stuff that, that Buffett, he, he's talking about companies, yeah. right? We don't have that luxury in the TSP. You really don't have that luxury in a 401k uh, right. or an IRA unless you did what we talked about earlier. Right. You have some access to, you know, in the TSP, we have the mutual fund window yep. uh, and, 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 and other private products. We can get access to an entire brokerage window. Yep. So I could go buy Apple. Yep. at fractional shares and do all that stuff. That is not what we're talking about in the TSP. Right. That is definitely not what a Warren Buffett is talking about. No, no. You know? I mean, I, I'm pretty confident. I don't know Warren at all, obviously, <laughs> Mr. Buffett, but I, I think he would probably say, oh, yeah, you know, just put your money in C-Fund and let it ride. You know why? Because he knows what most of us know is that most people are not going to take the time to educate themselves. So that probably is the safest bet. If you're not going to educate yourself and you don't know what else to do, then put your money in the mar- in the, in the in an index fund yeah. and ride it for 30 years. That's only if you just have no desire to learn anything. Right. If you have even the smallest desire to learn how to do the fundamentals of this stuff, that's a bad that's a bad idea. Yeah. And I yeah. think I think anyone in his position would agree, but he's making the assumption like most you know, institutional level, you know, financial people that us little guys, we're not smart enough. Right, right. And, we, and, and in a lot of, A, we're, we're not. We don't have teams of super smart people, right? Yeah. B, we have a life. We don't have time to do all this stuff. Right. Uh, and if, if the stock market isn't your thing, uh, you're a little bit stuck because, you know, the incentive to invest in TSP is huge, right? You do the five, 5%, you get 5% matching, that's 100% on your money. So you'd be kind of crazy not to do it. But if, if you don't understand or are not interested in this stuff, uh, go look at real estate or art or some other store of value that that will go up over time. And if you're not interested in any of it, then just just put it in an index fund and let it ride. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that is the best you can do with no interaction. If yeah. if that's if that is where you come from, I don't disagree with that earlier kind of yeah, right. assumption. Yeah, fund. Like, don't look at whatever, it. Put it in there. Seventy thirty split. Whatever. If you're not going to try to actively manage this at all, or have someone do it for you, aka us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you're not going to have anybody, you know, we give you guys the info. You just got to use it. Uh, Take a horse to water, can't yeah. make him drink. Yeah, yeah. Um, approach your investments with a long term mindset, right? Yes, of course. You're not if you're using his fundamental uh, way of looking at the world. You you don't worry if it, if it goes up and down uh, because if you, you've bought it undervalued, that's why you bought it. You you make money when you buy it, not when you sell it. Is is the idea? It's the same thing in real estate. You you buy something that's uh, undervalued when you buy it. Hold it for a long time, then you eventually sell it, and it's worth more. Um, I thought this one was pretty good, though. Don't be afraid to sell if the scenario changes. A famous Warren Buffett quote: uh, When he was asked about an investment, he uh, decided to sell at a loss. Amazingly, even Warren Buffett sells at a loss sometimes. The most important thing to do if you find yourself in a hole is to stop digging. <laughs> I think. It's funny how he justifies it when he wants to, right? <laughs> right, right. Well, it's not him. He's he he would disagree. I mean, ugh. he's he's obviously great. You know, one of the best ever uh, investors, and um, he's not an idiot, right? He doesn't lose money. I mean, if if he makes a bad bet, 
he he cuts his losses and gets out. It's okay. Well, he certainly wants uh, to own every stock he buys forever, right? He wants to own it forever. The reality is that outlooks change. Uh, it might surprise you to learn that a couple decades ago, Buffett bought a large position in uh, Freddie Mac. A few years before the financial crisis, he noticed that the lender lender's management had started to take unnecessary risks with the company's capital and decided to sell. So why did he decide to sell Fannie Mac? Because he has access to information that the rest of us don't have. He, he noticed that the lender's management had started to take unnecessary risks. We could never know that. A few years later, when the financial crisis hit, it became clear that Buffett had made a smart move because he sold Freddie Mac uh, prior to the financial crisis. So yes, Warren Buffett does sell things. Uh, learn the basics of value investing because that's that's what they do. It makes sense. We've talked about it. Um, you buy things at a discount. You hold them until it's time to sell them. Um, uh, research and reflect. All, all he does, he spends all his time doing research, which we don't have time to do. All right. Um, so ho- hopefully that gives you guys something to think about. Uh, we don't have access to the kind of information that these guys do. Um, it's really more about a mindset. If you are stuck on this uh, mentality of buy and hold because you don't know any better because ever since 2009, the market always goes up, um, you know, this thing is smacking you in the face right now, the, the market today. All right. Bonus chart is uh, EFA, which is a ticker symbol for our, our iFund, and dollar sign USD is the US dollar index. So I did this on the... Facebook Live this week, uh, I did a showed how the dollar index correlates to a bunch of different um, asset classes, but I just wanted to do the I fund real quick because it it almost exactly inversely correlates to the I fund. So um, the the red and black up here is the I fund. So this is the I fund chart, and b- the the black line is the U.S. dollar index, which is the the price of of dollars, right? It's the, the price of the dollar index. So international funds, as the as the price of of the dollar index goes up, it it gets more expensive for international companies, right? So it makes sense that the I fund goes down, right? Because as the dollar goes up, it, uh, countries outside the U.S. have to pay more to get to to do things in terms of dollars. So their stock price comes down when the dollar levels off even, it doesn't even have to go down, it just has to level off, the iPhone goes up, right? When, and, and in general, overall, as the dollar is increasing, the iPhone is decreasing, right? And it's a really, really good correlation with the iPhone. It's not as exact on the CNS funds, but it's really good on the iPhone. So if you connected the lows here on the dollar and just watch that, at some point, the, you know, the dollar is going to break this trend line. And and when it does, the I fund and all, all the stock funds will start going higher. But until the dollar gets out of this, you know, trading range uh, to the downside, stocks keep going down. Now, the dollar isn't the only thing that obviously that impacts stock price, but it's a huge one. So uh, I would watch that dollar index pretty, pretty closely. All right, so TSP fund charts, um, you know, it's if you're following this weekly, uh, nothing's really changed, right? We, uh, as long as we're below that 20-week moving average line, there's no point in being in the stock funds. Uh, the only alternative would be the F fund if if that was above the line, which it's not. And we'll take a look at that. But uh, the question was going to be, do we break below this June low? Right, um, we're 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 in a in a pretty rough place right now. I think it was last week, either on the, the show or the newsletter. I can't remember. Um, we did the uh, uh, Larry Williams and his, his the seasonality and or, ordinarily in a year ending in two, um, the fourth quarter tends to be really really uh, bullish. Well, that chart, if you remember. Uh, this this low in September stayed above the summer low, and we're not below it yet, but we're we're awfully close. We could we could be there by the end of the, end of the day. Um, 
and this chart setup is not the kind of thing that I would expect to get a, a, a stop of the, the falling here and then we start moving higher. It just doesn't look that way. Um, so, and fortunately, if you're in the G fund, you're, you're good. This is, this is the last, you know, this is the last place that we can look for support. Um, you know, maybe we get it down here for, uh, because it was, you know, the, the high before COVID, let's say it was, yeah, 3,400. So maybe the market comes down at 3,400 and gets support at this prior high. Uh, that's, that'll be the next line that everybody's looking at if, if we do get below this, this low here. Um. I mean, after that, you know, we'll try to get support down here at the bottom from COVID, you know, and you can run Fibonacci extensions and try to figure out other support levels that you can look at. Um, but uh, if we get one more week, like like this week that we we're just in, and we're down here somewhere, it, we're completely in no man's land. I mean, it just falls like a waterfall. That's what happened in 2008. Uh, S fund is no better, basically. Uh, Tech is getting hurt really bad. I mean, you know, it's down 7% for the week. Uh, it's basically still, again, just barely above the June low. So, and you get RSI declining. Um, came up here, hit that 50 level, and reversed right back down off it. Uh, it's it's pretty easy to follow this stuff, honestly. Uh, it's a little bit harder to, to act on it, but not really if you can just keep emotion out of it. iFund looks horrible. Uh talked about last week how it actually did close at a closing low below because uh, that wick you know that the actual closing low in June was like 60 and we closed just barely below that last week and then this week you know we're off another almost six percent so I fund is not looking good at all and the F fund actually looks the worst um, bonds are getting ham I mean this is the worst bond market in like a hundred back to the 1700s I think they say uh, so the F fund is not the place to hide. The only place we have to hide is the G fund. Uh, it just, it is what it is. And as interest rates continue to go up, the value of the G fund goes up. So some people are actually looking at this, um, you know, idea that I'm, I'm making more money in the G fund every month, which is true because as rates go up, uh, the G fund goes up. And if you were to put this in kind of context, because everybody bad mouths the, the G fund, um, if the G fund is about three, it might be above 3% uh, on an annual basis by the end of the year. You, you would have to buy, if you buy a two-year treasury right now, two-year treasuries are up to like just over 4%. And uh, it's, that's like insane. That's another whole conversation. But uh, you have to give the, the bank your money for two years to get that 4% rate. We get 3% in the G fund and we have access to the money. We can move it back and forth between stock funds into the G fund every every day if we want, right? Within the, uh, the IFT rules. But um, I'm not giving, you know, a million dollars to the bank for, for two years only to get that 4% rate. Now, it's, it's, it's risk-free, basically, just like the G fund, but you don't have access to the money. Um, so, you know, people are starting to figure out in this environment anyway that the G fund is a pretty good deal. Okay. Which we've been saying for a quite a long time. Quite a while. Yeah. Quite a long time. Um, not everybody believes it, but I think it's helping them believe it now. Questions. If you have any questions, make sure you put them in the comment section of the uh, wherever you found this video. Yep. So on Facebook, YouTube, FlipTube, whatever. Yeah, yeah, all the tubes. Oh, TV went out. Hold on a second. <laughs> I mean, the, the whole idea of this is, is to get you get people thinking and questioning and, and doing a little bit of research and, and just don't take everything you know, for face value, that's that's all. Absolutely. And watch our show every week and it'll help. <laughs> <laughs> if you like the show, share it with your friends. If you don't like it, share it with your friends. You can find us at growmytsp.com. And if you have any questions it's just, and there's no comment section, just email us at yep. support at growmytsp.com. Excellent. Have a great week. We Out will here. see you guys later. Bow, bow, bow.